Welcome back to Follow the Compass North. Today, we're going to be discussing one of the most underrated and yet most critical skill sets that you can have as a survivor. And that's the ability to make or repair clothing or gear using a simple needle and thread. Now we're not using any type of thread here today. We're using inner core from Paracord. This is extraordinarily strong. Depending on the manufacturer, you could have 20 to 40 pounds of tensile strength per line. I've pulled this out of this piece of inner core, or this piece of 550 here. I use, leave the rest in there so I can pull them out one at a time and use them. And then set this off to the side for more line. The first piece of inner core I passed through the eyelet here and then doubled back onto itself. Simple overhand knot here, as you saw in the time lapse. Tighten it down and then melted the end so that I have a single loop all the way around. This allows me to have a very simple starting stitch where I can push through my material, pass through its own line, and effective create, effectively create a girth hitch around the material. This is extraordinarily strong and will not go anywhere. From there, I can either do a loop stitch, which you saw on the bottom seam of this bag, where you just poke through the same side each time and come around the material. It's a good way to keep two pieces together on a seam. Uh, I use this for patches or for repairing backpack straps, pack straps, sleeping bags, socks, shirts. I've sewn just about everything with this. And if you want this to be a little bit more secure than just a spiral, you can go around your own line here as you pass through, which will lock this loop, creating a locking loop roll. I'm only going to take a few of these because you can see a locking loop across the top here. You saw me sew it earlier in the time lapse. Here, I didn't pass it through the same line like I was supposed to. There we go. And with this one, you end up with a ridge line showing off your series of what have effectively are half hitches. That time I wrapped it around twice, creates this large diameter knot here at the end. That's a good termination knot. Then you cut about three eighths to half inch off and melt down this excess to seal that knot. This melted plastic end cannot come undone and it keeps your stitches all nice and neat and tight. You also saw a flat stitch here when I moved the pocket down to my bag. This is just simply going in and out, same direction. The starting stitch for this is just one stitch very close and girthed and then through. And then when you get to the end, all you're going to do is come up, wrap a few times around the needle with your excess, pull through, make that large knot and burn these down as you saw on the time lapse at the beginning of the video. Now this bag specifically, I'm gonna be using to reinforce a Ziploc bag, which is about the right size. A Ziploc bag used for a water container is very easily to puncture, very easy to damage. But if I were to throw it in this nice cloth bag now, I can uh, melt snow in here, I can melt ice, I can carry water from place to place, keep this in the top of my pack where it's not gonna get crushed and make sure that I have a good water container and it folds up a lot easier than a Nalgene. I can stick this in the bottom of my pack and have a emergency water carrying device. A little pocket on there, that's just for fun. That's so I can put other things in there that could damage the zip block or cause issues in the future. I have something there that I can keep a couple of pieces of tinder, maybe a small knife, small lighter, some other survival equipment. Uh, and I just like the look of it, to be honest. I could also attach a strap onto this and have this as like a, a satchel that I carry around for collecting uh, wildlife, for collecting food and whatnot. But this is where I'm gonna leave it for today. I'm going to be doing several sewing projects in the future, so I'll videotape those as they come up, talk about the usefulness at that time, and press on. Uh, I cannot emphasize enough the value of being able to repair your own gear. One, it's a huge cost savings. Two, it's very empowering to know that you can do that. And three, you end up with these cool things that you just can't get anywhere else. Uh, so I'm a big advocate of this, and as you watch my demonstration videos, you'll probably see a few knife sheaths here and there, or a pack that's been repaired, or some other piece of equipment that I've manufactured on my own because of something as simple as taking a large diameter needle, 
and sewing some inner core through some garbage material. If you enjoyed today's content, please feel free to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment below, check out some of our other videos. Anything that you do that helps our channel is greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a great day.